What's going on Internet? IG here again with another Linux distro review and today we're checking out the Fedora spin-off that I referred to in my Fedora 20 review known as Corora Linux. Now I have done reviews of Corora Linux before and it is a fantastic distribution that takes Fedora and kind of bolts on all of the extras and all the software that you would come to expect on a normal desktop operating system and it packages it in a very nice distribution. So they're definitely chasing the user-friendly audience, which is something that's a little bit harder to do when you're not using an Ubuntu base. They are using Fedora 20 as their base for their distribution, and to that effect, that means they get a distribution that is very quick, and it's also got the Yum package management system on the back end taking care of all of your software. Now, uh, this can be a good thing or a bad thing depending on your preference. Now, using Fedora as a base for a distribution is not a bad idea at all because they have some fantastic technology happening, like I mentioned in the Fedora 20 review, and they're constantly pushing the envelope when it comes to Linux desktop innovation, at least on the system level, on the back end, the stuff that you don't really see. Now, like I mentioned, on the desktop side of things, you usually don't get much beyond vanilla, and that's where Corora steps in. Over the last couple of years, Corora has been providing both a KDE and a GNOME desktop, uh, but nowadays they also offer a Cinnamon desktop, they offer a Mate desktop. Now I'm looking at the KDE version simply because I like KDE and also I didn't look at the KDE version of Fedora 20. So I thought it might be worth having a look at the KDE version of Corora as they share the same backend. So KDE looks exactly like KDE should. Because this is running off Fedora 20, you do have a very nice up-to-date version of KDE clocking in here at 4.11.4 and of course KDE 5 is being worked on as we speak. So while that is a little bit irrelevant, it's still exciting to see where the KDE team is going to be going next. Now like I already mentioned, if you're going to be running Corora Linux, you're going to be running the same tool set to manage packages and to install and remove software. So you can see here we've got the KDE version of the add and remove packages, which is known as APA. And if you've been around KDE long enough, you know how this works. It's a pretty basic software center. You go into applications, you've got your different categories, and you give it some time and you can see all the different apps that you have both installed and the ones that you have available. Now one thing that I will mention about Corora is that out of the box they offer you all of the repositories that you need to install things like third-party codecs, third-party drivers, Steam and all of that fun stuff. You can also see down here in the system tray we have an updates notification which allows you to install all of those different updates from the notification menu here. And then of course if you dismiss that then you will see it in the notification center itself. So you can review which apps need to be updated and which packages are available for you to update to. And then you can update them from the menu itself which is pretty handy. Now when it comes to pre-installed applications, Corora comes with a very complete set. It is a bit of a weighty download but not terribly so. But for that download size of around 2 gigs you get a very decent amount of software. Now for those of you who aren't familiar with KDE's layout, by default you are going to get a menu that looks like this. It's sort of a more Windows Vista or Windows 7-esque menu. But when it comes to showing applications and showing a list of apps that are available to use out of the box, it's easier to use the classic menu style. And that's one of the great things about KDE, you can change nearly any aspect of the distribution to include widgets on your desktop or widgets on your panel the color scheme and design of the actual desktop buttons and layout themselves and really anything to do with the way the system looks you can customize. So if you're a fan of desktop customization then definitely give KDE a look and Corora Linux is not a bad place to start. So back to pre-installed software, you have Back in Time, which is a backup manager, as well as Samba, Firewalls, and also the Yum Extender for all of those tricky things that you sometimes have a tough time installing, such as Flash or Microsoft fonts or all of those proprietary bits and pieces that help your desktop work better. And you can see here that it's very easy to add on external repositories for things such as Google Earth or VirtualBox or RPM Fusion, which is where a lot of the other third-party software comes from. So Yum Extender is a fantastic way to install third-party software, and it's definitely worth a look if you are running a Fedora-based distribution like Corora. We've got a few development tools here, including translation, modelers, consoles, and a few different front ends. We've got the Virtual Globe from KDE, similar to Google Earth. We've got a handful of board games, 
A whole bucket load of graphics tools which is good to see, including Darktable and Digicam, two fantastic applications, GIMP and Inkscape. They really have a complete catalogue of media tools here as well as internet and video editing and music listening etc. All of these tools here I have mentioned before in previous videos, but it's also great to see that they have the description of what each of these apps do, not just the name itself. So it makes it very easy for new users to figure out what each application does, rather than spending time trying to figure out what they are. It also has a complete Office suite with the LibreOffice and also a few external tools like Kmail and Calibra eBook Manager. And then of course these system tools are pretty similar to what we've seen in normal Fedora releases. When it comes to performance, I've got to say that Corora is pretty snappy for a Fedora based distribution. Fedora itself is quite lightweight, generally speaking. And while Corora does have a bit more going on in the background, you can see it's using 0.75 gig or 750 megs of RAM on idle. And it's hardly using much CPU at all. Boot time is very quick indeed. And at the end of the day, Corora is just a much better presented desktop version of Fedora Linux. So if you'd like to try out a Fedora based distribution, but you're not exactly sure where to start, then definitely give Corora Linux a go because it'll give you the opportunity to use Fedora as a base, use all the package management tools and all of the back end goodness that Fedora has to offer without all of the stress of setting up all of your favorite apps and actually customizing the distribution so that you can use it on a daily basis. Now, of course, this distribution is not for those who are dedicated to free software, as there are quite a few third party tools and tweaks that they use. But on the most part, it is a very good showcase of what open source software has to offer. And it's probably one of the most complete KDE desktop experiences that I've seen this year. Granted, this year has only just begun. And if you are interested in finding other KDE distributions that offer a fantastic KDE experience, then I'll put some links down below to a series that I did last year on the best KDE distributions of 2013 and you'll also find links at the end of this video as well. Once again, thank you all very much for watching. If the video helped you out, then feel free to click that like button. It does indeed help out the channel. And if you like this content on a regular basis, then feel free to subscribe. Keep the suggestions coming for any Linux distros or desktop applications that you'd like me to check out and I will add them to the list. Thank you all again for watching and I shall catch you later. Peace out ladies and gentlemen.